part three of, I don't know how many right now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, next thing that we went and did, I decided because I was over at her office that I was going to stand on the digital scale. I want to know every time I go to a doctor how much I weigh. I got down to 280. And so I was pretty proud of myself. I'd lost 30 pounds. That was amazing to me. And I was just sure that I'd lost more pounds. Now, I had also eaten some carbs a couple days before I'd done this doctor visit, or the day before actually. And I knew that because I'd been on a carb fast, that if I ate anything, that I was probably going to gain something as a result. I didn't feel anything different. My clothes felt the same as it did when I was uh, at 280. I got on the scale and I weighed 284. Four pounds overnight. I can't believe it. It's because I was starving myself with those carbs. And I'm convinced that when I started eating carbs again, to reward myself, I had just a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more, I gained those four pounds. Um, she said, Christy said that we were going to start my um, diet for this three months at, at, at 284. Did I say 184 before? I meant 284. So I weigh 284 pounds as of the doctor's visit with the nutritionist. So that's where we're starting my weight at which I guess is okay because it just means that I can go I, I got just that much more that I can use to to go lower. I was a little fearful when I was in her office she was talking about exercise and I said what happens if I lose all this weight and I get down below the 40 BMI because at 39 you're not considered obese and the insurance anyway reading it it says that it doesn't consider you it's not a necessity to have this surgery if you're at 39 or below and I said, what if I get down to 40? I know that sounds like a really silly thing. Seriously, it's a concern to me. What if I do? I've been working hard on getting this surgery. I've been cutting my carbs. I've been trying to do what the doctor says, dropping the sugar. And then I go in there and I drop all this weight. And they go, oh, look, you don't need to have the surgery anymore. And then I, I failed. So I said, what happens if I do that? She says, that's not the concern. The concern is that... Um, she says, as a matter of fact, she had a patient that got down to a BMI of 32, lost 40 pounds, I think she said, and they, they approved him for gastric bypass because he had comorbid symptoms, and comorbid symptoms are diabetes, heart problems, high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, you know, stuff like that. Other things that contrib are contributed to or are caused by this uh, obesity or morbid obesity or extreme morbid obesity. Um, the worse that your health gets, of course, the more concern is to make sure that you're healthy. So she said not to worry about that, to go ahead and, and exercise. Uh, haven't done it yet today. <laughs> I'm, I'm depressed. I, and I might be depressed because I know i got to exercise. And I realize that I, you have to do that too. You have to do that. So she said to go ahead and get on a program. Got me on some iron pills. I'll show these to you. I've written on the top of the bottle one time a day because that's all they want me to do. Um, from CVS, and you can get these anyway, 45 milligrams. She told me that was fine. That was all I needed to do was 45 milligrams. That was plenty. And one time a day in slow release. And so I've got to take that every day. I'm also also taking Walmart's complete multivitamin. Yes, you have to be on, you have to be healthy. So my, my advice to you is that you seriously, if you're thinking about getting this done, you start the program before you jump in the water. You go through it like you are already, like you've already had it done. That's been my mentality. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the multivitamins. I'm going to have the iron in my system. I'm going to have... Um, I'm already doing the protein shakes so they're not weird to me when I start after the surgery. It's not going to be a weird flavor to my mouth. I'm already used to it. Uh, I'm cutting it back on my carbs so I'm not going to be craving those as much. I, I uh, minimize the amount of food that I eat. I use different implements. As a matter of fact, um, we had said that we went out to eat the night before a Chinese restaurant and my husband mentioned to Christy that I use chopsticks when I go out and eat. That's just me. I do. I use them. And I like using them. And she said, that was great. Use them for every meal. And I looked at my husband and I said, I told you I read that in that book. By the way, that book I'm referring to, another piece of information, 
This is a Bible. I swear to you, this is a Bible on this procedure. I have read everything you can read in here. I've marked it, written in it, highlighted it. Let me see if I can show you. I mean, I've been all through it. You see all those highlights and everything? That's because I'm serious about this surgery. I'm not, this is not a game to me. This is my life. And anyway, I said I told you to my husband that I read that in that book that if you could eat with chopsticks, that you eat with chopsticks. The other thing that you do, and I had started it before, we'll pretend that this is a fork or a spoon, is that you take a bite, you chew, you put your, your utensil down between bites. And I did that at the Chinese restaurant with my chopsticks. I take a bite, I put my chopsticks down, and I chew my food. Now this is how you start to develop, how you're going to be able to maintain this um, success story after the surgery. You start before the surgery. Nobody who's ever run a, a, a 5K marathon just started at the start uh, at the beginning of the race without any conditioning prior to that. They always prepare before they ever do it. Um, no writer ever just sits down usually and just starts writing. There's always thoughts and ideas and a lot of notes and, and, and think Oh, phone. Nobody important. Nobody important. So I let them just go away. Um, nobody who starts anything usually just starts at the start. There's a lot of preparatory stuff that happens prior to you ever beginning. So I, re I really recommend that you you start at the you start way before you ever get to the point where you have to have this. You learn everything that you can learn. You study everything you can study. You listen to everybody who's ever ha had it done in person or in forums and groups online or um, on YouTube. YouTube has been the most valuable friend to me in this procedure. I, I have watched, if I'm subscribed to you or if you subscribe to me, and you have weight loss videos, I am guaranteeing I will watch every video you have. If you have 250 of them, I will watch every single one because I want to know what you went through. I want to be educated. I want to know if you if you uh, had problems. And I've heard a lot of people say that after they've had gastric bypass surgery, that chicken is a problem for them, that, that they can't swallow it, that it wants to come back up again. So chicken is a big thing for me if I want to... Um, if I want to have a protein, if I'm trying chicken, I'm going to try very little bit of it to make sure that it's okay with me because most people say that it's not. And I want to make sure that I know that what the standard is for around the world or around wherever that I'm either in it or out of it. And I take caution with everything. This is my life. This is my body. This is me. Um, next year I could be dead because I didn't do anything. And I don't want to be. I want to be here. I have a whole life ahead. I, I just started living. I just started playing the piano or learning how to play the piano. So, so it's awesome. Um, I only have a couple more minutes on this one. Um, I mentioned the size of the stomach. She says that you go from the size of a football that's about this big. And in your video, that's not an accurate. You don't see it the way I'm doing it. But a football is about this big when you're holding it. You go from a football, that's the size of a normal stomach, how much you can hold, to the size of an egg for food. That's what you'll be putting in. So um, that was important to know. I also went to my primary care physician and I will discuss that on my next video um, where a lot of what my anxiety today is about and what I'm kind of feeling depressed about um, I think it's coming from from that visit along with all the information that I got from this uh, nutritionist visit so if you're still interested join me on my next video it'll be in just a couple of minutes just a click away have a great day thanks for subscribing